So this weekend I'm planning on doing probably one of my best YouTube videos. But I sort of jumped the gun. I'm waiting on the camera crew and stuff like that. And I'm going to explain to you what professional, why we ask for trackouts, what mixing is all about, why is mixing more money, what are we doing in mixing that is making such a humongous difference on a track. So I'm going to talk to you about, this is an instrumental. We're going to actually start selling these instrumentals on Loop Gurus. I'm not trying to plug my, my studio here, but th these are going to be killer. I'm going to show you here on the uh, screen what's going on. If you look at Pro Tools here, um, I've been drinking a lot of caffeine, I'm like shaking. Ugh. Um, if you look at this, the greenish color are all the drums. So there's the kick, snare, percussion, hi-hats. Uh, there's actually an 808 over in that other, I'm colorblind, so I really can't tell what color that is, like purple. What those are doing are being bussed into these tracks. These are all buses. So my outputs are buses, as you can see. And these are the input buses. Now in my studio, how this works is we have this SSL summing module. So before it hits the summing module, this is what you pay for. This is what, if you're going to any studio and you want professional results, this is what you want to see what's going on and why we use hardware and, and, and so forth. And so on my converters, I have 16 channels. I like breaking it down this way so I can utilize all the equipment. This is the full-blown mix. And what we do is usually start with something like the percussion instruments. I'll listen to all the instruments, make sure I'm not just mixing. I'll have these drums running as I'm mixing everything. But then I'll find, pick and choose, spend the time, and figure out what I want to go where. So I'll start from the first, and I'll go all the way around and, and tell you what's going on. So the first piece of gear, the liquid channel, is actually taking care of the 808. It's ridiculous sounding. Okay, so now this one is out of the chain right now. I just didn't find a use for it. I will, but the 808 is going through the liquid channel. I really like the sound of it. It's right now threshold negative 21. It's got a harmonic that I'm adding to it. Then it has a 5 to 1 fast release, uh, 165 on the re I'm sorry, 165 on the release, fast attack time. And it's really smoothing out. I got some mid-range adjustment. It just worked on this. The other thing is, is I got a plug-in grabbing. Um, so it's two compressors. It's like the pull and uh, the push and pull method where I'm pushing into the compressor and then I'm pulling back with that compressor and it just gives it this image. A lot of guys ask me like how do you get that image and, and that's one of those tricks. I can't really just say you do this, this is the settings, it's never going to work that way. So the next thing we have is we have the top um, DBX running the kick drum. At the bottom, sorry. Listen to the freaking kick drum. Now I'm really changing the gain with the DBX. The the number one thing about the DBX is it's got such a, uh, uh, I would say, unique sound. DBX invented compression. I have it running at 3 to 1, set at 0, pushing the fader in Pro Tools until I get the perfect sound I wanted. And then actually the output gain's at plus 20. I'm really hitting that hard. I got it set that way, the converter set that way. I want to get that DBX fail, uh, that feel excuse me so it has that just wow that kick drums by itself and that's a trick using gain on pieces of equipment as well as the dynamic control of that compressor the next thing is the snare drum up top now if you hear that outcast style I wanted to get the snare drum to sit even with that. So I have that at like plus 10. I'm pushing it. I have a reverb and I got the verb to sit. So it's got that Bone Thugs and Harmony style snare drum, but it still has the snap of the snare. Um, threshold's really small on that. It's like a 1.5, 1.6. And then the threshold, I'm sorry, the ratio's 1.5, 1.6. But it's really about where you're feeding the compressor. I never really... People ask, well, where do you set the compressor? I'm always about feel. I want to feel what's going on. I'll push the, the fader and how this works so you understand what I mean by pushing it. All this gear is patched in so it runs out of a set of uh, converter channels in the patch bay. The converter channel goes into the gear, and then I'm doing my summing because I, I just like to do it that way. It's always worked, and it's a lot easier as far as patching and whatnot. So it goes out of the gear. I mean, I'm sorry, it goes out of the converter, 
into the piece of equipment, out of the piece of equipment, into my bottom patch bay that's actually my summing inputs. So it hits this, and then once it hits this, inside this, it's got its own little routing. It goes over to this master module, which has a mix level, which is, is absolutely phenomenal for mixing, because we can change the whole entire gain of the song, or the sums, and bring it back in. So once it comes back in, it goes to this channel here. Just trying to do a quick video, man, but I don't want to miss this. I'm, we're going to do the rest of the video. But that last fader, the stereo fader there, is the line back in from the, from the summing box. It goes out of the summing box back into the converter. So everything's being summed, but when, I'm gonna, when we actually sell these sessions to people, we're going to track it out like this, and then we're going to rebounce everything one at a time. That's why I'm using as much hardware as I possibly can. Everything will be separated, and then we'll reprint a Pro Tool session. These are very, very time-consuming sessions, but we know what it takes to get this professional result. So if you like hit us up and you're like, oh, well, I just want a basic mix, then we can do that kind of stuff, but this is really where stuff like sounds like what's on the radio, where we have the, the equipment, we use everything to the best of its ability, and then we reprint it. So let me keep going on the, the chain of events here. Now, on the percussion, the percussion of the, the drums was really important to me. And I wanted it warm. One of the things that really happens with percussion instruments, when I'm talking, you know, like like bongos and and just the rhythm of this drum beat to me was needing to have a warmth to complement the kick and the snare. So I ran it through the massive passive, actually a stereo um, bus. This would pretty much be, and then I had the Manly MU. So inside the patch bay, I went out of the converter, into the MU, out of the MU, into the massive passive. I actually did it where you sometimes want to EQ then compress, but I wanted to get that warmth, really push that um, manly. As you can see, I'm really wanting to get the tube. I pushed it really hard for an effect. In mastering, if I was doing stuff like that, it'd be absolutely stupid. I'd totally overdo your, your track. In this case, we want the warmth so that percussion sounds live and real. So there's a lot of thinking that goes on in mixing. The other thing I did was actually boost it in the mid-range, 470 and I think 6, actually 820. I cut it 150 to let the kick drums do their thing. And then uh, up at the top, I didn't want too much sizzle. I wanted the, the hi-hats to take that place. So I reduced 3K. Um, quite Not as much, but I shelved the whole entire thing. Then we have 470. I want that. That's like the medium frequency range. I think it's like a balancing range, just as 4,000 hertz is. Um, and then once again, 800 and I think 60, 820, I'm sorry. And then 150 we cut on the shelf all the way out. It, it makes such a huge difference. So like when you listen back to the drums now... Now, one thing that we do here put these on the little guys. Those are the Oratones. What, what the Oratones are great for is knowing when something is too much. When I get a mix in or I listen to something for the first time, a mastering job, sometimes I'll slap it on the Oratones because that's what most people are going to hear. I mean, lower end boom boxes, you know, you got something from Target, your mom and dad bought you in your room or you got to think about the people that are going to be listening to, to this. So if we can get those drums to have an image on those, it might take a while, depending on the song and the arrangement and whatnot. But that's why I tell people, you know, mixes can take anywhere from, from two hours to uh, two weeks. It, it really matters. When you, when you start to have the value of what we do and you understand that professional side, it's not as hard to, to say, yeah, we're going to pay this guy to do it. And I have a handful of people pay me really well to do mixing, and they're bigger companies and stuff, but then I also have independent guys that really want mixing done, and I want to do these videos to inform you, educate you, and give you tips and tricks. The next thing that we have was the hi-hats. Now, I wanted to add some, some pump to the hi-hats, and as you can see, they're running through here. I wanted to have that chamber, bone thugs, and harmony kind of drums. Watch when I take this off. They disappear. So you wouldn't even hear those. 
Now I understand the gain's on, but it's really grabbing with the kick and it's complementing the kick. I could actually even tighten that up. That's the last thing I messed with before. Let me try this. There you go. So, yeah, long story short here, what we're going to do is stem all these, bring them back into the session, and then we're going to utilize this hardware on other pieces of this, this big old song. And once we come to the end, and you start mixing again, once we get all this done, then we start using plugs and, and doing fine tuning and stuff like that. We have the Duende plugins um, from Solid State, which is pretty cool. Um, I have the Oxford plug-in, some other stuff, and I really do fine, subtle EQ and stuff. What I do when I first start mixing is I want that initial thrill. Like, what are we, what are we missing here? Things that I can't change are compression, so I'm, uh, thank God for it. I've been uh, so many years doing this that the compressors and stuff, when I first started, it's one of the hardest things to learn how to listen to. But once you understand compression, I, I've done it for 13, 14 years now. And that is one of the biggest things that I think you're paying an engineer to do, is to clean up the song and get that compression that happens industry style. And Gunyans, <laughs> no, but what I've, what I've learned through the years is utilizing other pieces of equipment, and bigger studios have all this hardware for a reason, it creates separation on its own. And something about hardware, and don't take away from plugins. Plugins can do the same thing, but it always seems like why we use summing boxes, why we use hardware, is it always has this distinct sound, each piece of hardware. And I think sometimes where plugins can fall short is you're using the same converter channels to run your music through. And what happens is while you do that, you're, it, it gets this mask over it. Like everything's got the same ones and zeros going through the same converter channel where if you're separating stuff out summing it out you're creating space there you're using hardware you're creating space there so if you don't have this equipment I'm not saying you can't mix your stuff in the box but I am saying when we do a professional song and we stem things out to certain pieces of gear it really benefits the recording and this is an intro to the videos we're gonna do this weekend I have a class that I'm teaching uh, Saturday it's Thursday now but in that class, I want to get some, some cameras going, and I want to explain what I'm explaining to the class. Um, I really, really believe that the, the whole goal of, of mixing is, is to get you in the mindset of how a compressor works, and then you practice, just like you practice playing basketball or whatever you do. And, and then you, you can practice, get your room right, get your, your, your speakers right, and get something that works with you. So my name's Doug Jenkins for iMixAMaster.com. If you're a musician and you don't want to do the mixing side, it is its own profession. It, you know, you might be a great guitar player. It doesn't necessarily mean you're Bob Ludwig or, you know, Brian Gardner. I, what I'm trying to get at is look at it this way. It's a team effort. If you're an engineer, hopefully you learned something here. And I'll go into de in depth on this um, in the next video. So look out for that in the next week or so. Peace. Peace.